Hello, welcome back to All Four United WFC. Another transfer show. We're we're coming up to the World Cup. We will have some more World Cup stuff coming up, but transfers, it's here. It, you know, there's so much to talk about, so many names to talk about. We've I was gonna call you Mr. Exclusive. I'm gonna run with that because <laughs> I don't think you've been on for quite some time, but uh it's great to have you on, Tom. Obviously, we're alongside myself and Jess. So I'll unmute you both because I've just noticed I've muted you during that intro. <laughs> but great to have you back on, Tom. I hope you are doing well. Uh, good evening, Connor. Yeah, uh, very nice to be invited. Um, really well, thank you. And I don't know, don't think I deserve that that title, but um, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. That's because I didn't know quite where to go with. But I'm good, I'm just going to run with that. But there we are. Um, I'm not going to waste any more time because we've got so many names and, and players and, and all kinds of things to discuss. But just firstly, Martin Ho. Obviously, we know that that last week it was reported that he was departing Manchester United. We obviously we now know where he's going. Um, been confirmed over in Norway as well. Just what you think, well, what you know, the details behind that, the kind of timeline we were looking at, and and really because I think it surprised a lot of United fans. But I think now we've seen where he's going. You know, obviously head coach and things like that. I think we can see why. Yeah, I think this has been um, in in the offing for a few weeks, um, and it's a really big opportunity for Mark for Martin Ho to go and be a manager, a head coach um, at a side who are fourth in the top tier in Brann in, in Norway, uh, a team with real pedigree in the women's game, and it's uh, it's a, it's an opportunity for him to to progress in his ambitions towards being towards being a manager and a really good place to go and do that if you're developing developing your managerial and coaching skills. Uh, and I don't, I don't sense at, for the moment. I don't sense any real ill, ill feeling or, or bad blood with Man United. I think it's been quite a respectful process. They're wishing him well. He's really wishing the club well. And I think it's just a, that kind of opportunity that perhaps, uh, you know, he couldn't turn down. And as far as the Norwegian club Brann are concerned, you know, they were searching for someone who they felt was going to be have real pedigree in terms of bringing through young players and I think that's one of the things that Martin Ho's been credited with a lot with his work at Manchester United is improving some of the youngsters um he's really well thought of amongst the playing group at Manchester United and I think some of the references that Brown got from what I'm told were really first class both from from players coaches and others that he's worked with so uh yeah Brown think they're getting they're getting one of the best in the world in that sense um it's been yeah, it's been quite a lot behind the scenes. Been quite a lot of work to make that that make that deal happen. The, the, the deal was brokered by um, an agent called Megan Brakes from the from the Neverland uh, Management Agency. So, so just to give people an idea, that's the agency that represents some really big stars like Rose Lavelle from the US, uh, Nadine Nadim, uh, and also Hannah Glass, uh, the, the fullback that many of you will know. But just generally, aside from those, a huge number of the best Scandinavian players all work with that agency. Um, and yeah, from what I'm told, it's with Megan Brakes is sort of uh, hard work that's gone into getting this over the line, and, and everyone seems to be really happy about it. So um, it's a sad loss for Manchester United, but but um, a good opportunity for Martin Ho and, and a great bit of recruitment from from Brown. Just very quickly before we move on to a couple of players, this comment here from what, what Sport is saying: Is there any rumours on a potential replacement? Obviously, United will, will look obviously hard for for that, or will they look within? You know, there's plenty of people within the current coaching ranks that could potentially move up into that. Have, have you heard any more on on a replacement there? Uh, to be honest, not at this stage, and not any concrete names, other than that it's um, you know there's a lot of interest, a lot of applications. I think flooding in from from very well qualified coaches, and but I think the club will just take their time to get this one right because it's about finding the person that's that's right for for the current coaching staff, right right for Mark, and also maybe bring in some some fresh ideas. But um, put it this way, they're not they're not short of applications. This is going to be um, this will be a, a high caliber coach who comes in and takes this job um, and big big shoes to fill. But no, to be, so to be brutally honest with you, and I'm always oh, my policy is just to be very careful that. I can only say what I'm really sure of, and in this case, I'm not sure enough of any of any names to to say anything. Oh, I'm sure whoever they uh, bring in, like you say, they're going to have a lot of applicants for that one. Uh, whilst we're on the, the topic of bringing people in, obviously we've been linked to a number of players now. Um, first one we wanted to ask you about was uh, Gemma Evans. It's kind of been on the brink. Have we got her? Have we not got her? Is she going to get announced anytime soon? I feel like there's all these players that. United are linked to and yet no announcements. So just wondering what the kind of latest is with her. Yeah, I, th I think that's extremely close. I, I think that's uh, um, all but done, I think is the best way to phrase that. That that I would be very surprised if that's not confirmed soon. Um, it's a little bit to kind of keep in mind logistically in that uh, she's with Wales, taking on the USA in a friendly on the 9th of July. 
over on the west coast of America, and I believe Wales flew today. So um, I wasn't, I was never expecting any announcement today because they were mid-air. Uh, they're probably just about to land the Wales squad. But anyway, um, the, that's really, really close. And I, I, I think that's one that Manchester United did the, the hard work on early. They were proactive um, when they found out that Gemma Evans was available. Um, and I think that one, I think you can be very confident of that one going through exactly when that will be confirmed. I'm not sure. There's a lot, a lot of uh, logistics going on in the women's game at the minute with clubs all over the world. Uh, sorry, teams all over the world. And but um, yeah, I think United are getting a. a, a, a it's a very, certainly a very good bit of business to get a player of that caliber on, on a free transfer. I think when when um, Reading went down, speaking to people at quite a few different clubs, that was one of the the uh, most sought after players from the crop of Reading players who were going to become available. Um, she's 26. She's uh, spent, admittedly, of course, most of her club career lower down the WSL. But I saw a lot of her at Bristol City when she was uh, playing at Bristol City. And I know um, Matt Beard, for example, was a huge admirer of her talents. Watch, if you've not seen her much before, she's um, a centre back who's very quite confident of taking control of the ball and bringing it out from the back. She's uh, quite commanding in her height and her presence. Uh, she reads the game very well, and but I think uh, crucially for Manchester United, what really interested them was the fact that she is a, a left-footed centre back, and that's one thing they really wanted to add into the options. Is, is it someone, someone who could? I think that's more for tactical reasons. There'll be certain games when Mark Skinner will want a left-footed centre half at left at left centre half, and other games when he might want two right foot is it i guess it just yeah, goes, yeah sorry i've given you a long answer here but i think there's a, i think there's some really specific reasons why a left foot center half was high on the priority list for manchester united and to bring in a, a, an international a wales international um who's you know, got the, the next three or four years of her career will, will probably be the best years of her career united seem quite happy no, uh, i appreciate um for some manchester united fans um it's you know you've not gone and signed Wendy Renard, you've not gone and signed like you know, uh, but that's never been United's strategy, has it? Really, in terms no. of we can um, see the group, though. you never know. <laughs> well, maybe one day, who knows? But, Start um, the day, right. I think um, I think for just for example, you, you know, Manchester United have proven themselves quite. Oh, you can debate another day, maybe about about the the business model and the strategy, and maybe whether they're doing the right thing in, in the strategy they have of, of, you know, doing good business and trying to, you know, break even and not outspend beyond their means. And, but in, if you're looking at the United as a, in terms of their recruitment with what they have, they have proven themselves quite good at finding bargains. Um, with Thea Garcia, for example, I, th I think Nikita Paris, another, another bargain. Letitia, when it was, I think her, I think Letitia's um, fee was around the 50,000 mark. Uh, it was a, release clause you know so they've generally been quite good at finding bargains and i think this will probably prove to be another another good bit of business it's certainly a, a divisive one i think you know as highland said because we're expecting this to be a tunkara replacement obviously we've seen that that she is also the partner as well links to psg with with her um you know french international probably more known i guess around europe and so on and to bring in a player as, as highland saying here has been relegated multiple times i don't look too much into that you know when you speak to people in wales she's highly regarded you said they're around reading as well um, another, I wasn't going to bring this up until a bit later on, but there's a few people asking about it as well. Speaking of centre back, sorry, Jess, I'm, I'm I'm messing up our order here that we've got the names on the screen. <laughs> but speaking of centre backs, uh, Lucy Parker obviously is a player that is seems to be on the move. Is there any chance United going for her as well, or do you think that that Evans, if we're looking at a replacement centre back, there's potentially a rotation? Do you see any kind of links to, towards United for Lucy Parker, or do you think that's more wishful thinking than? than anything else on that one I, I wouldn't completely rule it out but that's not that's not something that i've heard on, on a really concrete um reliable level so i guess I'd, i wouldn't want to speculate too much or tell you try and lead you down a path that i'm not sure of, but um it, certainly um i the only thing i would say about lucy parker is i, I do believe that her uh, next club has now been um chosen so i i not well connected enough to tell you who that is, uh, but um, that her decision has been made. So if United are, are moving in for her, then that that decision has been made. Um, but it's at the moment, I've not 
been told it would be embarrassing if she signs for United in the next half an hour. But at the moment, I've not been told that United will sign Lucy Parker. So not 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 yet. Not that not 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 now. Anyway, maybe ask me in a week. <laughs> I'll say, yeah, I'll tomorrow morning, though, after everything we've said. <laughs> I'm not, I feel free to have a right giggle. At, I'm sure you'll play this clip again. If that's fine. But no, uh, things can change really quickly in football in terms of what you hear and what you find out. But um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Gemma Evans. Um, Hugely confident that you'll sign her, but I don't know. I can't at this moment in time tell you that you're signing Lucy Parker. Yeah, another one that I think has been mentioned a couple of times in the comments is uh, Katie Robinson. Uh, I know she's, yeah, like Ellie said, there's been linked to us. I think I've seen a couple of loose kind of connections. Um, any updates on her? Yeah, uh, that um, my initial reaction to that one is that might be a, ever so slight red herring. Um, I can see why she would appeal to Manchester United. It fits that profile of signing a really young, talented star. But um, Brighton would do, they would move mountains to try and keep her. I think that she's so well thought of there at Brighton. I think that would surprise me. Again, Phil, I would, it would be um, very fun to play the clip, but I could, a lot of things could come back to bite me on, on, on this one. But um, Hey, and it's a long transfer window as well. So, um, but um, that I would, I, that would that when I read that, I saw I saw that I think on Twitter somewhere, and, and my initial reaction was that that would be a really big surprise because of how highly regarded she is at at, at Brighton. Um, so, hey, well, again, we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, Highland, I see your comment about uh, Robinson and Hanson. I want to come back to Hanson in, in just a little bit. We'll, we'll talk. We'll do the, We'll do this in order. We'll do the incomings, contracts, and outs in in that order. So we'll try and keep it keep it on incomings for a second. Obviously, we're talking about forwards there. Obviously, we've got to replace uh, Alessia Russo. I think we were going to go for one anyway if she had a stayed, um, regardless uh, of if she stayed or not. I think we would have gone for a forward. Obviously, she's on the thumb now. Carolyn seems to be the name that is is most linked to United. Um, what do you reckon on that? Obviously, we know that the NWSL obviously different time frame to, to to the European League, so there's that issue as well. Obviously, January is that more realistic? Do you think on that one, and and how likely, I guess, do you think that is uh, on completing? Yeah, I, I, with all the NWSL players right now, I guess I would urge a little bit of caution about whether whether things would happen this summer or in January. That's a, that's the first really important thing to say. Um, definitely a player that, um, and there's been some really good reporting on this from, from my colleagues in, around the rest of the press pack, but uh, definitely the player that Man United have, have made a, at least an inquiry about, definitely one of the ones they're looking at. But I would say two things. Firstly, they're not the only club interested in signing her. And secondly, she's not the only forward that they're looking to sign. Um, they have a, uh, quite an, uh, an extensive list of, of candidates that they've been looking at um, who have been quite proactively being scouted and examined and 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 pros and cons been looked at for a long time so it's not um it's not a case of it you know it's caroline or bust there are lots of people they've been looking at and a lot of clubs want caroline so um uh yes yeah, still a little way to go but uh watch the space but and yet yeah, you are right to flag with the end of itself that um yeah, at the moment it's not out of the question for a player, but I think more end of cell players we be more likely to move in the winter window. Yeah, I think I'd uh, personally, I'd love to see Carolyn at United, to be honest. I think she's absolutely top player. Um, obviously, the other one that's been linked heavily, uh, another Brazilian, is JC. Um, that seems to be the one that kind of United are very, very keen on, which is understandable. Um, what do you reckon the chances are on that one? Yeah, what a superstar. Um, uh, yeah, I, I do, uh, as others have reported, and I think my colleague Catherine Bat of the Mail has done some very good reporting on this. Um, yeah, uh, definitely a, a high priority, I think, for Manchester United. Um, what I would say, again, just keeping the World Cup in mind um, and the fact that that, in, in these instances, these are not, you know, not players moving moving on. Um, I'll try and explain what I mean by this in a minute, but not players moving on a free. So I would think if you're a Manchester United fan really hoping that that might happen in the next few days or the next few weeks I would maybe expect that kind of negotiation to be continuing after the World Cup that's not to say that Manchester United are being slow or anything like that but a lot I think you'll find a lot of World Cup players will seek to do their business either before or after the tournament that's not 
in every case, but in most cases. And in a situation like this, where you've got, where you might have, you know, two clubs really competing, um, you know, that sort of thing could go down the wire. And that's, there's no need to be United fans to panic because well, what, we've got two and a half months left of the, of the transfer window. WSL season doesn't start for three months almost. I think it's the uh, two, two months and 28 days until the start of the WSL season. So, and two and a half months until the window shuts. So, um, that although, again, sorry, with the caveat of I'm happy to be embarrassed in the next 24 hours, um, but I think that that's probably maybe one that you'll see moving towards um, deeper parts, sorry, latter stages of, of, of talks after the the World Cup. Um, what we're seeing over the next sort of 48 hours, uh, uh, this week particularly, we'll, I think we'll see quite a lot of the WSL to WSL kind of end of contract moves coming towards a conclusion because um, I know you guys know this, um, you've done a lot of great work on transfers on, on the pod, but many people listening might not know that um, you know, unlike the men's game, WSL clubs can't technically, you know, conclude a signing with a uh, from with a player from another WSL club on a free until after the first of July. So um, this week there are clubs all over the England in a frenzy of trying to finalise contracts and do uh, you know medicals and, and everything. So um, this week is maybe more your priority for, for finalising off your, your free transfers. And um, yeah, again, I can, forgive me for the long answer, but that's um, that's worth keeping in mind. No, that uh, makes a lot of sense. I can't imagine any sort of big big name signings whilst they're off in Australia are also kind of thinking about their club kind of uh, future. So you're absolutely right. Nothing's, nothing too massive is going to happen, I don't think, until after the uh, World Cup now. So it'll be interesting to see what does happen when the time comes. And yeah. worth thinking about the players' negotiating position if they're thinking they could have a really good World Cup. Exactly. Really strengthened by how they perform on, on the world stage. And um, I'd love to know what you guys think, but Brazil, I think, are a team who could have a very good tournament. Fantastic manager, Inthia Sintaga. Lots of talented young players. They played, we saw how well they played in the finalissima in the second half, particularly against England. And um, uh, yeah, so I, I, I suppose if I'm uh, one of those players, I'm maybe thinking I might be in a more um, powerful position at the end of August. Yeah, as you said, it's, it can add a couple of zeros onto a contract or a transfer fee if uh, a player like to, as you mentioned, Brazil, obviously with JC, I'm, Brazil are one of my three. Uh, to, to get to the final anyway so I think when you look at it like that yeah I, well, I know, you know what I mean what what three teams that I've, <laughs> that I've picked out um, I won't say who the other two are for now <laughs> you know, but, you know, you know, Jesse you're going to let him get away with that I was wondering if England were even the major three no <laughs> that's one of the reasons I didn't want to say it <laughs> but no England aren't in my in my three to make it to the oh, final yeah. unfortunately that Maybe I might be proved wrong in a couple of <laughs> in a month's time or so. We'll see. Um, but yeah, as you're saying, <clears throat> could easily uh, add. And you know, credit you know, clubs and the players aren't stupid. They know that they know that they can hang on. You know, to these players. Where as you mentioned, the players out of contract. Obviously, there's some some wiggle room, so to speak. Um, obviously, talking of contracts, there's a couple of questions. I'm fat. No, before I move on to that one, uh, just this question here. I, I was going to come back to this anyway, but obviously Esme Bruce, another name that's been mentioned again, a player that potentially maybe not now we're looking to, you know, United fans maybe got to be a bit more patient on that one. Emma Watson's a weird one. I think that's been widely reported. That's been pretty much confirmed for a long time. Obviously she's come out already and said that she's leaving Rangers anyway. Um, so we know she's on the move somewhere. Um, but on those two names, are we expecting anything on those? Obviously Bruce is a little bit difficult. We know that there's interest from other clubs as well. But Watson, is that more likely to be in that? Is that going to be maybe one of the first, obviously, alongside Evans? What what do you reckon on those two in particular? Yeah, I think of, the, of those two, Watson is, is more likely. Um, Brooks is someone that uh, I think quite a few quite a few clubs around Europe are quite, quite keen on. Um, a, a, a really talented young player. Um, again, someone who could have a, a big tournament. I'm not... I'm not uh, at this stage, not 100% sure that she'll end up as a Manchester United player. But we are again, sorry, with the caveat that we are really early in the summer. But um, we're at a point where there's quite a lot of names kind of uh, banded around 
Uh, and Manchester United, I think, for a lot of people, is sort of uh, not sorry, not in the cases of the two Brazilians, absolutely not. But uh, with quite a lot of players, I think Manchester United is that kind of club where if you're wondering, oh, why, where might they go? A lot of people are mentioning Manchester United because they know that they're needing quite a busy summer, and we know they are going to have a you know they are actively recruiting on a lot of players. Um, but at this stage, I think with but it's uh, from my own side anyway, just a little bit too early to to, to really say with absolute surety that, that, that she's somebody that they're that they're talking to. Um, but uh, yeah, what I should say, sorry, to try to be a bit more helpful, is that um, certainly we're expect we're very much expecting Manchester United to to spend much quite a lot more than they did last summer. Um, which is going to be a step forward. Um, they know they have to. Mark Skinner said that quite a few times. Uh, they know they have to. Um, it's a step up to go into the Champions League. They need to add depth. Um, they added depth last summer as well, very well, um, to make the bench stronger. But now the depth itself needs to get stronger because you need to be able to um, juggle that JSL and Champions League football. Um, excuse me. And, and quickly because... Uh, Manchester United will have, from certainly from what I, I'm sure you as well, from what I can make of the draw they'll get in that uh, second round qualifying playoff, that it's not going to be. None of the options are remotely easy. So um, they need to go into that that playoff um, with yeah, a really strong squad for that for that, and that that means getting them out together. Um, and getting people into into training as early as they can in September. Yeah, when I saw the uh, possible teams for the Champions League, a little part of me died, I think, inside. I, mean, I fully understand that to be the best, you've got to beat the best. But I was just thinking, like, come on, this is our first our first year. Like, just ease us into it a little bit. Yeah, um, it's, it's the nature of being debutants. Um, but it doesn't mean that Man United won't get through. You know, I think we've exactly. seen we've seen their, their cap- we've seen the capability. Oh, exactly. uh, where, like you say, it's all kind of now about investment. Yeah. Um, like you said, Skinner's mentioned it. I think it was Mary Earps at the end of last season on one of her kind of post-match interviews made a big deal about um, the club and getting them to invest. Mm-hmm. Um, and in fact, she's one that we're sort of waiting for contracts information on. Um, I don't know whether maybe, like you said before, the players are kind of in a bit of a position of power now, you know, if they have a good World Cup. Could she be kind of holding off on any contract kind of negotiations, waiting to see if the club are going to offer a little bit more? I, from what I understand, of Mary Mary's not that kind of Mary's not that kind of person. Mary Mary right now, genuinely, um, hand on heart, no kind of um, you know, she's not sort of you know PR uh, nonsense kind of person. But but Mary, truthfully, right now, will only be thinking about trying to win the World Cup with England. She's she's that kind of focused uh, human being. Um, and I think she'll, as soon as she went into camp with England on the, on the night, Monday the 19th, she will have put, uh, genuinely put all club stuff to one side. She's very driven with England. Um, and yeah, you're right in that if Mary Earps goes on and has another excellent tournament, wins the Golden Glove, you know, saves shootouts and things, sure, that does change negotiations but i i don't believe from people i've spoken to on multiple sides of, of that i don't believe she's the kind of person who, who's uh toying with the club in that way or, or stalling on them i think um genuinely uh, her only focus is on england and then as soon as she come back to manchester united her, her full focus is on manchester united i suppose what i would say not just about mary but maybe about all all those kind of players who who over the next 18 months or so will will be um, you know talking about new deals or, or will be coming up to some kind of new deal. The business that Manchester United do this summer now will be really crucial in in influencing those players' decisions to to sign on. Um, if they can get yeah they get the likes of a geisha over the line. Forgive me, please forgive my pronunciation. I'm spend them. Um, my life typing on the computer, but if um, if Manchester United get those sorts of deals over the line, it's an enormous statement, isn't it? Into players like uh, oh, massive, absolutely massive. It shows that the club are serious, uh, serious about their future, serious about kind of Champions League, serious just about the women's team in general. You're right, Jess. You're so right, and I think um, there's that's that. To there'll be an element of, and I don't, I don't mean this. Uh, 
in phrases. There's, to a small degree, there's almost like an element of who he, Manchester United being linked with better players even helps in that regard in a small way. Clearly, that's irrelevant compared to actually signing the big stars. But just being talked about uh, in the same bracket as clubs like Leon and, and in terms of who you're looking at, is it represents a shift in in kind of conversation now we're being talked about and we are even if it is just a possibility yeah. we are a possibility now <clears throat> that's true because yeah. I could for example when I think if I think back to say um what was the big last summer for example um unless my memory's escaping me there were kind of uh meet there was two lots of Miedemar was a big big talk it wasn't cheap that last summer and, and players like uh, Martins, you know, they they were the big transfer sort of early summer moves, and loads of clubs have mentioned, but never Manchester United. It was always some of the other bigger clubs in Europe. And uh, sorry, I'm not. Uh, that's a weird example because I'm not trying to link you guys with Martins and, Man- and Miedema. What, <laughs> I mean, what I mean to say is that I feel like this summer's transfer, this summer's transfer gossip has been featuring Man United far more heavily with the really elite category of player. And I suppose, um, although that's that's not the same as you actually sign those players. It does, I think, represent a slight shift in how they're perceived in the market by agents, rival clubs, uh, and just more generally in the sport. Just very quick, I wasn't going to ask this, but it's just something that you said off the back of that. Do you think United are getting linked to some of these clubs because the clubs now know that United have this kind of draw, obviously, with the Champions League? qualification on the line and that United need a striker so do you think there's a, a possibility that some of these names are being linked to get better deals at the clubs that they're at obviously we mentioned obviously the Barcelona links as well we know that she's at a contract uh, next year do you think United could be maybe used in that way a little bit we don't really see it too often uh, in women's football I'm not saying that it doesn't happen because I think it does in some cases but is there an element of that or do you think United are generally in these conversations for for some of these players a real mix. Uh, generally, in the conversations with the Brazilians, uh, as we've spoken about, that that's I think that's really genuine. Uh, where is that? Could that be happening? Yes, I, I, I think so. And we do actually see that in the women's game a lot, more than people realise. I think we see uh, certainly. I think us as journalists, um, I, don't, I can't speak for my colleagues, but I know that. Um, there, most of us, as as in the, in the journalists, will will look to, to get a sec a second source on a on a bit of information. There's quite a lot of things that I've maybe I'm probably sounding really boring, but it's probably there's quite a lot of names that I've not mentioned on this call just because I I, I don't feel I can because they've only come from one person. Um, and for me, I'll, I'm only really comfortable when I've when I've had conversation with with two people, with both sides, um, but. There are, as, as journos, we, and I'm sure it's the same for the others, that we are, throughout, particularly throughout May and June, we receive a lot of messages um, from people who would quite like their player linked with a, a certain clubs. Manchester United sometimes is one of those, many other clubs too. And you learn over the years the varying degrees of reliability of some of that, but the more popular the women's game has got, the more that, is, the more that has happened in instances where that player has ended up going nowhere near that club. So um, there's a real mixture out there of information. Um, I have had messages from people hoping that I might tweet that Man United are interested in signing X that I have so far ignored. Um, because And there's not just Manchester United, the same with quite a few clubs. Um, people are often quite keen to get their player linked to Leicester at the moment. Uh, that's another one. Um, that because there's been a few articles saying that Leicester will sign 10 players. I think um, that might have been written first by Emma Sanders at the BBC, doing some good reporting. Uh, and, I, and I wrote something similar, uh, that they're looking to sign 10 players. And when people read that, they think, oh, that's a club we were trying to sign people. Well, maybe maybe it'll be believable that my player, uh, you know, or uh, our club's player, you know, might be a target for them. Because it goes both ways. It's not always... Um, it's not always just like a, a player's camp who are trying to get them moved. Sometimes clubs have a benefit with one of their players being if, they, if they're trying to tie up a, a deal, get a better offer from another club. So, yeah, sorry, I'm telling you things you already know. But trust me, um, May and June is can't carnage, absolute carnage in a good way. We want we want it to be busy. We want the media industry to grow in women's football. But 
Yeah, it just sounds very chaotic. I, I just it is, it is it. absolutely lost. Yeah, but, it is yeah. a bit chaotic. No, for sure. I got told a name, which I'm not going to say on here. I'll message you afterwards. And I was like, there is no way that that is happening to United. I think United's name is just being used a little bit there. Um, Sport your seed question with Robinson. We answered that just a little bit earlier. I'm going to throw two more names at you from a contract point of view. Um, because well, the reason I'm putting them together is because from what I understand, they are both at a contract with no option this summer as an extension. There's a lot of players that were out this summer, but the, the option we would imagine has been triggered because it's just stupid not to when you've got that option there. Ethan Mannion and, and Emily Ramsey are two players i'm pretty sure um and i'm looking at the list i've got are out of contract this summer with no option but nothing from the club has come out they weren't on that list of players there was four players released from united last week that are departing with more uh born cascarino's loan ended in tunkara but nothing on on either of those two so one would assume that they've signed or something has been agreed because nothing else has come out but for me personally i, I don't again you might know more on this but emily ramsey i was pretty convinced that an Everton move was on the card. I thought it was going to happen in January, I'm not going to lie. But do you know any more on on those two and what kind of timeline we'd look to expect on contract announcements? Because we know neither of them, I'm pretty sure Rams is not going to the World Cup with the Lionesses and Mannion definitely isn't. So I would have expected something about them by now, but there's just, you know, in the public domain anyway, nothing that seems to have come out about those two. Yeah, very fair questions. On Ramsey, worth, really worth bearing in mind that although she's not going to the World Cup, she's been in England camp as the standby goalkeeper, which is as of Saturday, that's that's stopped now. She left after the game against uh, Portugal at Stadium MK. So, um, But in the previous two weeks, she was in that kind of environment where the players don't really get involved with, with contract talks or transfer discussions. Uh, and as an example, I'm sure you'll have noticed that Rousseau's departure was announced just before that uh, start of the England camp um, because they essentially go into sort of like a transfer blackout kind of mode for two weeks. And then we're expecting, as I'm sure you are too, and many others are expecting that over the next 24 hours, she'll, Rousseau will complete her move to Arsenal. And that's because of that fortnight window. And uh, with Ramsey, uh, uh, that applies to, although she's not going to the World Cup, that's, that still applies been very respectful of the England and the importance of that England camp so uh, timeline wise I think that that will have been picked up today essentially well we might, yeah Monday the third yeah that I think that that matter would have been picked up today uh, and the only update I can give you is that from my understanding both both United and Everton very very highly uh, and at this stage I would think probably too early to, to say but um, watch this space because it, she's, I think, wanted by wanted by both. Um, at this stage, I, I, I'm not. I wouldn't like to predict either way, but um, I would. I wouldn't be. Uh, how can I put this? I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if um, certainly over the next kind of two transfer windows, we see we see one or, or two of the backup goalkeepers at Manchester United moving clubs. Just at this stage, not sure who. Yeah, another one kind of along the similar lines is uh, Kirsty Hansen, obviously been on loan at Villa. And I was kind of expecting her to just stay there. You know, she had a really, really good season, to be fair. Um, did they make an offer for her at some point? I'm sure I saw that. Um, although, like, it's probably on Twitter, so it probably just some random in a basement somewhere saying that. Uh, I'm not sure of an, uh, of an offer, but certainly um, Villa, I think, would love to keep her if they could. Uh, and I, um, I would say that that's arguably the best place for Kirsty Hansen because she seems so settled there and so happy there. Absolutely smashing it! Like from yeah. a fan perspective, I'm just actually buzzing that she's doing so well. So if she would stay there and continue playing, you know, week in week out and keep putting in some quality games, then absolutely fantastic for her. I think for her. Um, Listen, it's you know when someone's played that well, Manchester United clearly would have uh, be cautious about losing someone who's, who's done so well. But there's an element of that where I think to myself, there's a player who looks so settled and so happy in that in that environment, and just it all just seems to click for her there. And so maybe there's an argument that the, sen- that the sensible thing for all parties, for the best of for football and certainly for her career, might be that, that that she ends up there. But in terms of being able to sit here and, and concretely tell you that. 
Villa have offered X amount of money um, uh, or there's this amount of talks. Uh, again, forgive me, uh, it's a little bit too early, I think. Yeah, it's certainly one I, I'm, I'm really intrigued. Hansen's the one player, actually, out of all the players. She's not out of contract this summer anyway, but the one player I'd be looking at. Just for the just for the players that we're loosely linked to, I'm thinking, where is Hansen going to get in? Especially because of Villa, she's playing off the left. Is she going to displace Golton? Probably not after the season that Golton's had as well. On the right, we've got so many players on the right-hand side. So it's a tough one. I really don't know. I think for her, I would want her to go back to Villa because I think she's, as you said, she suits it better. I think she looks happier there. So for her personally, I would, exp- I would want her to go, but I think United, uh, well, they are well within their right to hold firm and say, well, no, is it a successful loan? We'll keep hold of you. And keep, and keep in mind that it could well be that, um, and sorry, I have to caveat this with explaining that I'm being slightly hypothetical here, but it could well be Manchester United, uh, want to make sure that they are bringing in some of the targets that they're going for before they allow someone of that calibre to leave. Because, um, you know, in a doomsday scenario where none of the forward options came through, which I, I don't think will happen, but if, if that did happen, you would then heavily criticise Manchester United if they had let Kirsty Hansen go uh, before those um, incomings were, were guaranteed. So... Uh, the sensible bit of business would be to tie up the incoming first, and then say to, and then say, okay, we know that's definitely happening, so we can now talk about this. So I would, if I'm Manchester United, I would be doing the, I would be trying to do the incomings first, before, before allowing someone of that caliber to 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 uh, to leave. That that, but that's that's purely me speaking as what I would do. <laughs> I can't speak for uh, for other, you know, Mark and uh, and and Polly Bancroft and and what they're up to, but that that's what I would do. No, for sure. I mean, a really random question from, from Dave. It's not really related to anything, but it's talking about your Christmas tree lights almost, that are on your ceiling behind you. I don't know whether that's... Very, very fair question. Um, that's um, uh, my uh, my wife adores those lights. They 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 was this they look like Christmas lights, but um, they then they I'm, I'm actually looking at them now. I can see why you would think that they do they do look like Christmas lights, but they just end up sort of being like our kind of glow lights if we're having um if we're sort of having a uh meal or, or something um so, yeah. um yeah, right, i would never thought of that before but you are you're right uh was it dave who asked that yeah you're right you're right that um they do look like christmas lights so uh, uh correct but um no they're they're not they're not left up from christmas they're just uh they're up all year all year round a couple of kind of final questions before we look to wrap this one up because I know you've got to, got to shoot off. What are you kind of expecting? Or I guess the kind of question is, should United fans be kind of optimistic or concerned, I guess, for the window? Obviously, we know, as you mentioned, obviously, Russo, Honor's another player that's departed. We don't know what's going to happen with Irks yet. There's a lot of contracts out next summer, if you're looking at it from, from that point of view. United have got a lot of work to do over the next 12 months to get key players tied down because there's a lot of players next summer without an option as well. So we're in this same situation then. How would you kind of look at it from from things you've heard and looking at it from the outside that what United fans should look should expect? You know, some people say that we're expecting six or seven outs and six and seven in. Usually, what happens with United, I would, I would expect in, in previous years. But what are you kind of expecting to see uh, at United this summer? In terms of in terms of numbers, I wouldn't think it'd be maybe quite that many, um, but not but not far off that um, five possibly. But I. I, I think six or seven maybe feels a, a touch higher. Um, I think uh, we've spoken already about the left side of centre half and, and that target, and I think that that's been ticked. And I think worth keeping in mind that with Bache leaving, I, I, my understanding is that the the hope um, is that Jade Riviere will will be kicking on and developing, and that that they, there's a ready made replacement there right back. So. Uh, at this stage of the summer, I'm not expecting Manchester United to go out and hunt to, to, to pay money for and, and sign a and sign a right back. So um, that's one well, maybe one less than what some people might be thinking. Um, but what they on the contracts, what what the club have to do it is is tie a lot of players down much earlier on. They can't allow so many of their star players to run into the to the final six months of or even the final season of their their contracts. In the way that they have done, um, there the example that people often look to, but Chelsea is one where um, they are 
planning the, the, the you know succession planning summer after summer but eight, you know two years ahead um we and Manchester United need to start need to start doing that because uh, and with the contracts there has to be a ruthless element to it where if you've you know if, if, if you've got someone who hasn't signed a new deal and they're into the final seven eight months of that contract and you you know you've got that offer on the get other offer on the table if that's not been signed then that, at that stage you have to, you have to be thinking about about the, the, the next plan you have to be moving on the most recent example with, with Chelsea with, with Harder and Ericsson players that they Chelsea adored and, and the fans adored and, and who, who loved Chelsea too but for whatever reasons you know the, the deals hadn't been signed when we came around to Christmas uh, early January um, and so the, quite a proactive decision from 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 Chelsea was was to say that, that's so that's that's okay we're gonna we're gonna miss you we'll be we'll, we'll we'll cry when you're leaving but we need to we need to plan ahead we need we need to move on and they very proactively went out and got on you know free transfers uh, Macario and, and Ashley Lawrence um, and not exact direct replacements but essentially two replacements. On, on a free and they're able to do that because they've made a decision over the you know over the winter that that's what that's what was happening because those talks are, and that clearly couldn't happen with with the Russo deal for whatever reason that just dragged on and on and on um so late in the summer and and the, for the benefit of the club and the player but definitely for the benefit of the club though all these talks to your all the players you're mentioning about there it, they have to tie up one way or another earlier in the year, even if they don't tell us in the press, even if you don't, you don't hear in a Mark Skinner press conference, he's not going to turn around in December and say that this player's leaving next summer on a free because they just don't, they don't do that. But internally, they, they they need to either know that's happening or, or get a player signed on to a new deal much earlier. It, it can't keep running big stars contracts down because these are huge, huge things that they need to sort earlier on. Um, it's just, and you're protecting yourself as a business. Um, it's just it's just um, one of the one of the fundamentals with football, and and I think I think the lessons have been learned. No, hundred percent. We certainly uh, hope so. We want to be sat here on on more positive news. Uh, that is for sure. Just one final, very quick one, because I know you've got to shoot off just a second. Vilderbor Risa was just the other player that I wanted just to ask you about. Divines a lot of United fans. Uh, I think is well, not divines because of her as a player, but more you know what whether she should be starting and all things like that. Um, do you know any more on on her thing? Obviously, there's some talk potentially. You know, in January, United project a loan for her. Um, you know, game time is clearly an issue for her and for a lot of the fan base as well. Do you expect her to be staying at United this summer again, World Cup, depending if Norway and, and her go and have a really good tournament? That could have an impact as well. Do you know any more on on her deal? Uh, as of, as of right now, I would I would I would say that I'm expecting her to stay. Um, it could be that there is a you know bids coming in off the back of World Cup form. But um, she, um, I think, contrary to what a lot of the supporters think in terms of her, understandably, from the minutes she gets on the pitch, she she is hugely highly regarded at Manchester United. So I don't think they'd be wanting to let let her go. As of as of the time of talking right now, I I would be expecting that she would still still be there uh, come the WCL opener. Fingers crossed we don't want to be losing anyone else, that is for sure. Tom, thank you so much for joining us. We've covered so much in 45 minutes or so. I think we've done pretty much every player that's linked to United contracts and outs and all the sorts on uh, on here as well. So thank you so much for coming on. Obviously, people can find you on Twitter. and Well, can't find anyone on Twitter at the moment. But no, that's no, a whole other story. Uh, uh, no, 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 uh, thanks for inviting me. Pleasure to come on. And, and, and please, excuse me for how many sort of... I, I, I'm not sure or... Uh, I can't I can't say right now because that's just uh, just to have to be truthful. Um, uh, but yeah, um, nice, to, really nice to have just have a chance to chat. And um, um, maybe next time we chat, you'll let me know who your who your other two finalists are. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sure we'll speak well, off, uh, off, off camera on that one. That is for sure. But um, no, for everyone watching, obviously, Barry will be back on Wednesday night uh, talking about the departures and all things like that with the fans forum. And everything else, make sure you're following Tom, Jess, obviously liking the video and subscribing. And we shall see you guys in the next one.